Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, teaching you filmmaking techniques and motion graphics. So today I have probably my most requested tutorial and basically it is creating like these titles or basically this layout for graphic design, like how I do these titles and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys how you can kind of create these interesting, you know, professional looking titles um, and how I lay them out. So basically I lay them out in Photoshop and um, I'll show you how this workflow works and how it can be effective. And this is ex uh, what I'll, we'll be exactly creating. So it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, I think it looks graphically appealing and there's some uh, animation to it. Um, and this is a, a good workflow to do, like if you want to design your, like your titles in Photoshop or like your layout in Photoshop, because now I can easily, you know, if I want to put this on my website, I can easily export this for web or if I want to print this out and create like a banner or something like that, I can easily do that as well. So there's multiple uses for designing in Photoshop first um, and then going to After Effects. And it's a really easy workflow. So um, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how exactly that works. So um, let's go ahead and let's get started. So what I'll do is go to uh, create a new uh, file for Photoshop and we'll make it uh, 1920 by 1080 since that's gonna be our uh, dimensions for our video. And I'm gonna go ahead and just set this to 300 just in case I do decide to print this and I can just change it to CMYK later. So we'll just go ahead and click OK. And then the first thing I can do is maybe go ahead and import some elements. So I have a few elements here that, that will be available for you to download. Um, and one thing I like to do is sometimes just take a picture and it's the picture that I took. Um, and you know, I like to do maybe fill this out to be uh, you know, the, the width of our uh, canvas here. And what I like to do with this is go to like filter, blur, Gaussian, blur, and it allows us to easily create some interesting gradients. Um, and if I just go ahead and uh, jump that up to like maybe 200 pixels or something like that, um, as you see, it created a very beautiful gradient. It's really interesting. It's a quick way to do it. And, you know, I think it's really cool to do it this way. You can always pull a picture off the internet, or if you have your own pictures, you can always blur those out to create an interesting gradient. All right. But anyway, uh, we can go to our, you know, our text tool here, and I can go ahead and type our text in here, and I can type in like Sunduck, and let me go ahead and just um, set it to white, and then I'll hit Command T on my keyboard or Control T on a PC to bring up the transform properties, and then I can just go ahead and raise this up a little bit, and uh, that's good. And the font that I'm using is Beatbaz. Um, Nuvi, which I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but um, you can watch uh, the video that popped up right now if you wanted to learn all my best fonts for graphic design. And anyway, let's go ahead and we can like select the background here and we can go to our line tools at the top and we can center that up. And then what we can do is go back to the type tool, the text tool, and we can go ahead and type our subtitle if we want. So like uh, tutorials, uh, filmmaking, and motion graphics. Just creating a subtitle. You guys don't have to do this, but I'm showing you guys my process of how I design things in Photoshop. And of course, you can lay all this out in After Effects. Um, and But um, personally, I think this is more intuitive for me, and this is how I do my workflow on a lot of projects. I like to lay out my things in Photoshop. But here we go, I have my text. And what I could do to create some interesting lines, or for like make the background a little bit more interesting, I go ahead and create some lines. So what I can do is go to the line tool underneath the, uh, basically this rectangle here. And we'll select the line tool. And what I can do is just like zoom out here and draw like a really long line. And we zoom here, we have our line. And then what I can do is hit Command T, Command T on my keyboard and we can like rotate this to 45 degrees. And I can zoom in here and I can like, move this in like the corner over here. And we'll click that check point right there. And then we'll go ahead and maybe hit like Command J on our keyboard or Control J on a PC to duplicate the shape layer. And we can like drag this down. If I zoom in here, oh, too far. Ugh. Doesn't, it's not really friendly with me today. Okay, so we just duplicated our line layer and it doesn't want to stop moving, stop moving, okay. All right, and then I'll go ahead and hit uh, select both of these layers, and I'll hit Command J again to duplicate these layers, and go ahead and just drag out more lines, and then go once again duplicate these, and we'll go ahead and kind of just repeat this process um, until we fill up the entire canvas. So, see, pretty much it's really easy to do, um, and we'll go ahead and continue to do this. 
So I will be right back when this is done. Okay, so we basically have laid all this out and it looks really ugly right now, but uh, what I'll do just to organize this real fast is I'll go ahead and select all of our shape layers, which there's a lot of them, and I will go ahead and create a new folder right here at the bottom, and I'll put that into a group, and I'll just call this one lines, and then we'll go to opacity, which is right over here, and we can go ahead and lower that by a lot, like maybe 25%, and now it kind of blends in there and it looks pretty cool. Um, it's really interesting. And then, um, let me zoom in here. Uh, and uh, now that I guess the next thing we can do is maybe like uh, go ahead and drag in another element, which would be like um, a bokeh texture, which what I could, what I suggest you do is uh, for these images, go ahead and go like go to Google and, you know, type up bo uh, bokeh texture or bokeh image. And you get these sort of bokeh, you know, files. And I think it's really interesting. Or you can always buy these professionally. Um, from you know stock websites. So, but anyway, this is a free uh, bokeh image. So, go ahead and just add that right in there, and then maybe I'll just you know scale this up. And okay, it's good. And now go ahead and maybe set the blending mode to I don't know soft light, or maybe we'll check out screen. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think soft light looks good for me. Or maybe we'll click on lighten. No, <laughs> so soft light looks pretty good. And you know, basically it's a trial and error, error to check out uh, how things work. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this texture underneath our text layers. So it's just right above the background. All right, and then I guess the next thing I can do is uh, add a Photoshop action. And I'll show you guys how to, you can go ahead and create these a little bit later in a future video, probably coming out this week or something like that. But I have these actions right here, which are basically like color presets. And if I wanna go ahead and maybe just click one of these and I'll just hit this play button here. Um, it'll add like a unique color correction to it with like, see, as you see, it looks pretty cool. Um, and, you know, I'll go ahead and show you guys how you can create those actions um, probably in our next video um, because I think it's important to uh, show how to do that. But I think it would take too much time in this video to show how to do that. So uh, you can always, you know, search up uh, Photoshop actions uh, like color corrections and things like that. Or you can always ma uh, manually color correct this automatically. So uh, you can just keep that in mind. Um, but anyway... Um, let's go ahead and maybe add like another element, which would be like my logo. So I'll go to the ellipse tool and I'll just draw out a perfect circle by holding alt and shift on my keyboard. And then I'll right click the ellipse and go to blending options. And I'm going to go ahead and lower the fill opacity all the way to 0%. And then I'm going to click on the stroke. So I'm going to click the check for stroke. And then I'm going to set the, uh, size to three, I guess. Yes, this looks good. And then I'm going to click, okay. So we have the outline of a, a circle here and then I'm gonna go ahead and just position this in the, like maybe right over here and then I'm gonna go ahead and like import our um, my logo which is right here and put that like right over here and have to make that even smaller okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and select our ellipse and our logo make sure to take that out of the color correction preset there and then I'm gonna go ahead and center those up with the align tools and then I'm gonna go ahead and also select our text and I want to put that on top of our color correction okay so that all that looks pretty good so all we have to do now is save this project so I'm gonna go ahead up to file save and it'll ask us what we want to title it and I'm gonna go ahead and title it um, I don't know uh, tutorial tut title and then make sure you click save and then you're ready to go. So we're saving right now and the next time I'll see you guys will be right in After Effects. Okay, so here we are in After Effects and the first thing we need to do is import our uh, Photoshop project, which is right here, tuttitle.psd. And I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this right into After Effects. And then what's important here is make sure that under import kind, uh, we go ahead and select composition, retain layer sizes. Make sure that is selected and you can click on editable layer styles and then we'll click OK. And then basically we'll have all of our, all of our Photoshop layers in this composition right here. So what we'll do is we'll double click this layer or this composition and all of our files are right here and let it load up for a second. And the only downside to this workflow is that Typically speaking, this is a little bit uh, slower. So basically, I have to work in a lower resolution in order to make this, you know, efficient to my, you know, to timing and things like that. So I'll click full real fast, and you guys can kind of see that all these elements are intact. 
Um, and as you see, everything is looking good here. We have all of our layers. We even have some other compositions because of our groups that we created in Photoshop. Um, and then one thing I want to take a look at over here is the uh, frame rate of this composition is automatically set to 30. If we want to go ahead and change that frame rate, what we could do is go up to uh, Composition, Composition Settings. And we can go ahead and set that to say like 24 frames per second. And then we can click OK. And then the duration is going to be like over like a minute. But that's really up to you however long you want that to be. So uh, let me go ahead and make, make this fit. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the quality to like third so we can make this work a little bit better for us. So um, basically, there's only a few elements down that we have to animate since all this is already laid out. So it's pretty much easy to do all this stuff. So what I'll do is maybe I'll go ahead and select our, um, you know, where's our titles? Here's our titles right here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pre-compose these. These should have already been in its own uh, layer already. So I'll go ahead to... Uh, uh, lay, uh, layer pre-compose with both of those uh, text titles selected and we'll call this one titles and we'll click OK and then what I'll do is hit S on my keyboard to bring up scale and I'll click the stopwatch to add a keyframe and let me zoom in here and actually actually let me drag this keyframe to like maybe five seconds and then we'll kinda like zoom it uh, inward a little bit so like we'll set the scale to 79 percent so now as time moves forward the text will come right at us so that's pretty interesting. And then um, I guess what we could do is uh, take like this bokeh background here, uh, which is the texture layer here. And what I can do is hit P on my keyboard and Alt-click the stopwatch. And I'll go ahead and type in wiggle. Uh, open parenthesis. Let me zoom in here. Uh, open parenthesis. Uh, 0.5 comma, you know, 40 close parenthesis. And for those of you who do not know what the wiggle expression is, basically it allowed this to like have random movement, like almost like camera shake. So now as we move forward in time, this texture moves a little bit. So it has this a little bit animation to this texture, which is really interesting. And then what else I could do uh, is maybe go to like, uh, go up to layer, new adjustment layer. And I can probably bring this underneath, you know, uh, just underneath our text to see, right underneath our text and logo. And what I'll do is go to Effect, Color Correction, Brightness, and Contrast. And we'll do the same exact thing. So what I'll do is Alt-click the Brightness. And we'll go ahead and type in Wiggle, Open parenthesis Point. You know, maybe we'll do 2, comma, you know, 40. So basically, uh, this uh, Brightness parameter will uh, wiggle uh, two, uh, two times a second, you know, for, you know, reset for the value being like to the negative 40 or up to 40. So it's pretty much just random. So this thing will basically, this image will now kind of flicker and it'll just add more, you know, animation to uh, what we're looking at. And then I guess the last thing I could do, or maybe I'll do one more thing. Maybe I'll rotate my logo here. So what I can do real fast is go to the beginning here, hit R on my keyboard and click the stopwatch for rotation. We'll go to like five seconds. And we can just like add some rotation to this. There's, you know, maybe we can have like this rotating completely around or whatever, but just just adding that in there just for the tutorial purposes. And then uh, what else we could do is uh, maybe what I'll do is go up to layer new, uh, you know, null object. And what I'll do to uh, maybe create like an interesting, you know, animation at the start of this. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and kind of select all of our background layers, which is up to like right over here to like the fringe layer to the background. And I'll go ahead and like uh, go up to edit duplicate. And I'll go ahead and just drag those layers on the top. And then we go ahead and just color code these to like purple or something like that. And then what I'll do is basically I'll, you know, hit P on my keyboard to bring up position and I'll go ahead and just drag these up. So it'll be over um, on top of our current composition. So that wants this loads here. And I am recording this uh, tutorial as well, so this was a little bit slow. Um, so, okay, so basically, um, I need to uh, readjust a lot of these layers. So basically, uh, this fringe layer uh, is pretty close to what we need to do. Um, see, the lines are pretty good. The texture is not good, so let me go ahead and bring that up even more. And then our background image is not good. Bring that up even more. And then we don't need our background. We shouldn't even have a background in here. Okay, and let me just go ahead and 
since I have them all in position now, let me go ahead and just drag this down by a little bit. Okay, and that should be just fine. And let me go ahead and parent all of our layers to the null object. And there we go. And then what I'll do is then I'll hit P on my keyboard to bring up position for the null layer. And I'll go to like maybe, I don't know, 15 frames-ish. And then I'll click stop, click the, uh, click the stopwatch for position. And then I'll go all the way to the beginning of our composition. And then I'll go down, I'll go here and like set our position down all the way. So what uh, we'll see at first is the blank composition. And move that up even more. So obviously out of frame. Yeah. And we'll continue to move that up. So basically this will kind of like just scroll right into our uh, text title and what we need to do is enable motion blur for all of our layers so I'll go ahead and turn motion blur for what we can turn on and then I'll go ahead and click the enable motion blur right at the top here and let me go ahead and make this position keyframe for the null object an easy as keyframe by clicking F9 on my keyboard and um, let me go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and add some overall camera shake to this image so what I'll do is go to effect uh, distort transform and we'll add that to the null object. And let's go ahead and alt click the position stopwatch. And let me go ahead and once again type in wiggle, open parenthesis, maybe 0.5, comma, um, maybe like 10, and close parenthesis. So we'll have just a little bit of camera shake, but not too much uh, where it'll be distracting. And I think that's pretty cool. So, okay. And the one thing we need to do is like for these purple layers, right when our animation stops, when it comes, you know, kind of scrolls in. What I'll do is I'll select our purple layers and I'll go up to edit split layer and I'll just delete those layers. So then pretty much the animation will just stop and it'll look nice. And if there's any like any cutoffs at the top here, that will completely go away and it'll look just fine because the uh, position will just kind of roll into it. But anyway, let's go ahead and render just a quick preview and we'll see what we have. And after a quick render, this is what we have. And it looks absolutely beautiful. I think the design looks great. Um, other than the lines are a little bit too thick uh, for this tutorial, but you know, it's just a tutorial and you know, not everything is perfect compared to my demo. But um, basically uh, this may not be the best workflow for you. Um, it is for me, I, being able to design things in Photoshop is just intuitive for me. So, you know, it works great for me. Of course, you can design all this in After Effects. Um, and it, you know, might be easier for you. Uh, but of course for me, I just like having that option to design in Photoshop and being able to import, uh, you know, my titles and things like that into After Effects and be able to retain, you know, all layer information. So I think that's pretty awesome. So guys, if this video has been helpful, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for more awesome tutorials like this. And if you have any requests for tutorials, please be sure to drop a comment down below or hit me up on my social media networks links in the description of this video. And guys, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.